This important podcast is brought to you by the Health Ranger store, offering a wide selection of prepping and survival products, including nutritional solutions and storable certified organic superfoods. Check out our full selection at healthrangerstore.com forward slash prep with Mike. Thank you for your support. A trusted source of mine who runs a preparedness supply company received a phone call from a, I guess it, you could call it kind of like a Chinese front company that operates in the United States. It's called QQ, as in Quebec, Quebec. You know, QQ.com is one of their websites. And I think, I think that's who publishes it. But anyway, QQ is running around trying to buy up every N95 mask in existence. Uh, they're trying to buy masks for the uh, pandemic, the coronavirus situation. And of course, the masks are largely sold out all over the place. And what's especially fascinating to me about this is that a lot of the masks that are in circulation around the world are made in China. Now, not all of them. I know 3M makes a lot of the more prominent masks, and I, I don't think that the 3M masks are made in China. But a lot of masks are, which means that China has already run out of supplies that are made in China. So now they're going to North America, and probably the same is happening in Europe, and they're trying to buy up every last mask that they can find, which tells you something kind of interesting, just by deductive reasoning, that probably the outbreak in China is a lot worse than what's being publicly stated. Because if it were accurate, what they're telling us, then they wouldn't have run out of masks by now. They wouldn't have run out of supplies and gear and so on. Now, the fact that they are, and they're going global to try to buy up every mask that they can find, actually that, that tells you a lot about the severity of this outbreak, or at least the anticipation of the severity of, of the outbreak. There's no other reason for people to be buying up all these supplies or, or governments to be doing so. This should tell us all something about logistics. And that's really the takeaway from, from this. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not here just to talk about N95 masks, because by the way, N95 masks are not even that effective against airborne uh, viruses, mostly. And the media often misreports this. N95 masks, the 95 is stating that it blocks 95% of the particulate matter in the air. Well, that's kind of pointless when you're dealing with viruses that are submicron in size in some cases or very, very small number, you know, single digit microns in terms of their size. And since those masks don't form a complete seal around your face, uh, viruses go right around them. The truth about those masks is that they're mostly designed to, to prevent the wearer from spreading something to other people so that when you cough or you talk or you spit or you sneeze, you're doing all that inside your own mask and not projecting you know, saliva into the air, like an aerosolized bioweapon. That's what the mask is designed for. It's designed for people who are already infected to not spread it to others. It's not really designed to protect an uninfected person from people who are infected. And it's, it's a giant misnomer. People run around thinking, I'm going to be protected against coronavirus by wearing this mask. Not true at all. You'd have to wear a face mask that has a seal, you know, like a silicone seal with canisters on it, you know, like a gas mask looking type of thing. That's what you'd have to have on if you wanted to stop a coronavirus from entering your respiratory pathway. Isn't that interesting? So, you, you know, a lot of the information that's out there about masks is just totally wrong and stands in, in complete violation of the reality of microbiology and biohazards and contamination vectors and all these things. It's just incredible how much misinformation is out there in the mainstream media. But let's, let's move on to the bigger picture here. If these simple N95 masks are wiped out everywhere, and probably if you go on Amazon and try to find them, they're probably all sold out there too, would be my guess. <laughs> I haven't gone there because I already have plenty of them. And the much better masks, too, the, the, the respiratory seal masks, you know, I've got all those. But if these are running out already, and we only have, as of this moment, three confirmed cases in the United States, it means the supply lines are so thin and so small that 
there's no depth to the supplies. What's going to happen when there are, let's say, theoretically 10,000 cases in America? At that point, will you be able to find an N95 mask? No. Or a pair of latex gloves? No. Or a, a hazmat suit? Probably not. Or even a, a free hospital bed in a city where the pandemic is spreading? No, there won't be any. Would you be able to buy emergency food as the quarantine comes down on these cities in the United States if that happens? The answer is no. It'll all be gone. You know, let me just tell you something. As, as a food manufacturer, we're a certified organic food manufacturer and retailer for survival and preparedness foods. My online store, healthrangerstore.com, for years we've had a product called Ranger Buckets. And Ranger Buckets, it's like a two-bucket thing where you get all of this certified organic lab-tested uh, preparedness food with, with a cook stove in it and some preparedness gear actually in the containers themselves. We have been, we, we've been very hard-pressed to keep these in stock, even without a crisis. And the reason has to do with logistics, which is the, that's the point of this podcast, logistics. We have to source, I don't know, over a dozen different things. You got to source the lentils and the pinto beans and the chia seeds and the cashews and all these things, black beans. We have to source these things and run them through lab tests. And, and then we have to vacuum pack all of these components to put them together into just one bucket. So to make one bucket, we have to get coordinated supplies from 12 different suppliers. And some of these are seasonal items, so it's very difficult to do that. And then there's a lot of manual labor involved in the manufacturing of these buckets with the vacuum sealing process and then packing the actual vacuum packs inside the buckets. And by the way, we've recently been offering what we call mini buckets. Mini buckets are much smaller buckets. They weigh less. We've had suggestions from a lot of more senior citizens saying, you know, the, the regular buckets are too heavy. So we started rolling out mini buckets. And those are live on the website right now. If we've got any left, I don't even know. But the point is, if we've been having a difficult time as a professional food manufacturer and retailer, a difficult time keeping these in stock during normal times, there is zero chance that we'll be able to keep these in stock if this pandemic gets bigger in America. There's, there's zero chance. <laughs> we, will be, we will be wiped out. And, and, you know, on our website, people sign up with their emails to say, alert me when this is back in stock. And that's an automatic system. I don't even control that. When we put buckets back in stock, everybody gets these emails. And then people start buying them immediately. Within minutes, you can imagine during a pandemic that if you're not on that list and you're not alerted, like, oh, we have 200 units in stock, you, would, you wouldn't even have a chance to buy any of the 200 because probably the first 10 people would buy 20 each, you know, <laughs> because they, they see what's happening. The point is, Logistics are thin everywhere you go. You look at grocery stores, it's, it's just-in-time delivery. You look at medicine and pharmacies and, and hospital supplies, it's just-in-time delivery. Go out to a grocery store on a weekend before a football game or something and just look at the almost panic of the masses of people loading up their shopping carts full of food to go stuff their refrigerators. That food arrived in that grocery store typically the day before or a couple of days before. That's, it, that's about it. The grocery stores don't have a massive section of inventory sitting in the back just waiting to restock the shelves. It goes from the trucks to the shelves. And the, the electronic scanning of the barcodes of the products tells their computer system what to order to put on the truck. So they're just replenishing what was just sold. And then that truck comes the next day. And then that's sold the next day based on predictive analysis and statistical analysis and so on, they know how much is going to be sold. It's just in time delivery. These supplies, whether we're talking food, medicine, firearms, ammunition, survival gear, pandemic gear, hazmat suits, all this stuff of night vision goggles, we've done stories about that. If you don't have these now, your opportunity, your window to get some of these may be collapsing because of what's happening with the coronavirus. Now, we only have three cases confirmed in the United States so far, but all three of those people traveled from Hunan province in China, and they traveled by air. Now, if you know anything about air travel, you know these commercial jets, they recirculate the air. And we know that this virus has human-to-human -human transmission. So if these three people on the airplanes, if they coughed one time, that's enough virus in the air to infect 
you know, dozens or potentially hundreds of passengers. And that has already happened. And then we have a 10-day incubation period, at least that's what's currently known. So we may have hundreds of people right now who are already infected and who are incubating this virus and are asymptomatic at the moment, but they may become symptomatic later after they've infected their families, their coworkers, and healthcare workers. And that's how this thing spreads. <laughs> that's right. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take long. Now, the average person out there just thinks to themselves, well, gosh, I don't need to stock up on anything. In fact, the media has told them, stop hoarding. You're a hoarder. If you have more than one item of any one thing in your pantry, you are a hoarder. Even if it's some crappy processed food like Kraft macaroni and cheese, how dare you have two Kraft macaroni and cheese? And by the way, there's no real cheese in, in, in Kraft <laughs> macaroni and cheese. It's artificial food coloring and uh, fake cheese. But anyway, that's beside the point. If you think that you're going to be able to go out and get supplies when it all comes down, then you're kidding yourself. You're kidding yourself. It's not going to work that way. And yet most people live in what we might call a bubble of oblivion. And in this bubble of oblivion, they don't need to worry about the trucks delivering goods into their city because they never see the trucks. All they know is magically Shazam fresh fruits and vegetables on display at the grocery store every day. Look at those juicy apples and cucumbers. Just put them in your basket. You don't have to worry about how they got there. Or Shazam, turn on the tap. The kitchen faucet, water comes out. It's magic. You don't have to worry about how it got there or what's in it. People are oblivious to reality. And then you tell them something like, did you know that the Truckers Association already announced months ago that if things get dicey in America, they will not deliver supplies to the cities? Were you aware of that? And their first reaction is because it starts to shatter their bubble, their little delusion. They're like, you're making that up. No, no, it's a press release from truckers.com. They represent 50,000 truckers. And truckers are not stupid people. They're not going to drive into a quarantine zone where there's a pandemic running rampant and the rule of law is breaking down. <laughs> truckers are not going to go in there. So how are you going to get your supplies, people? And the average person is like, well, why do we need trucks? See, and that's the disconnect. What do you mean, why do you need trucks? Do you think grocery stores are restocked by magic? Do you think there's a Star Trek teleporter in the back and food just gets teleported in there? Like, beam me up, Scotty. Beam me some Doritos. And the Doritos magically appear. No, that's not how it works. But th again, the average American has no clue about logistics, which is why they, they have this irrational faith in the constant supply from logistics systems that are highly vulnerable to systemic failure. These are the same people who tend to say, well, well, if something goes wrong, the government will save us. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. They have these things called FEMA camps. And if you want food or water, you have to go to the FEMA camp. And by the way, you're not allowed to bring in firearms. <laughs> in fact, if things get bad enough, you may be required to turn in a firearm at certain camps to get food, trade your gun for a meal. And people will do it. Some people will. But if you think the government's going to save you, you don't know anything about how government operates or the history of FEMA. <laughs> Just look at, look at what they did after the hurricanes in you know, New Orleans and, and Houston in years past. I mean, even if they're trying hard, and there's good people in FEMA, they're not all bad people, I'm not saying they are. But how do you... How do you get supplies to people? Again, it's a logistics problem. I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, they found a whole warehouse of supplies uh, sitting in Puerto Rico, supplies that were not distributed to the people. So all these cargo planes and boats were offloading supplies that ended up just sitting in warehouses. Why? Logistics breakdown. Logistics failures. Because logistics, it's, it's complex. And you know who's bad at doing complex things well? Government. <laughs> even, even the military is bad at doing complex things well. Why? Just because of the scale. The military is huge. A lot of divisions, a lot of people. How do you coordinate it all? It's a big problem. Probably none of us could do any better. Not, I'm not trying to get down on the military, but military is a blunt force weapon. Military is not that good at delivering supplies. Neither is the National Guard, neither is FEMA, neither is any government. You know what's good at getting supplies into the hands of people? decentralization or the localization of supplies, people growing their own food, for example, 
or people stocking up during normal times and having backup supplies. And that is exactly what has been discouraged by the media and the government itself. Ready.gov says you should have a three-day supply of food and water. Three, really, a three-day supply because I remember driving by the underground cave complexes in, in, in Missouri, in Kansas City, and places like that, and there's some in Denver as well, or near Denver, or in Colorado. Anyway, the, the government has underground cities with not a three-day supply, not even a three-year supply, but over a 10-year supply of food and water and radiation detectors and emergency medicine and iodine, hazmat suits, you know, ammunition, all these things. So the same government that tells you to be ready for three days of disruptions itself has a continuity of a government plan called COG that has over a decade of supplies in underground cities. Why? Why the difference between you sheeple, you should have enough for three days, but we, the government, we're going to have enough for a freaking decade. Why the difference? Because you're expendable. That's why, in their mind, you're expendable. And from the point of view of COG and the high elite people in government, they don't give a crap whether you live. <laughs> you, if you thought they gave a crap about you, then you haven't been paying attention to Adam Schiff lately and, and the Democrats and Jerry Nadler. They're, they're not doing jack squat for America. Their entire effort is eliminate Trump. Down with America. You know, this, this is what they're pushing. They don't care if you live or die. That's why they say, oh yeah, you should have three days of Kraft macaroni and cheese. We're going to have 10 years of organic seeds and food and iodine and hazmat suits and firearms and, and weapons and you know fuel. You can store diesel for a long time, by the way. Uh, up, you could even store it for 10 years if you, if you treat it correctly with some antibacterials and so on. But the average American not only doesn't even have three days worth of food, they barely have any food at all in their pantry. They, and they don't have backup supplies at all. And they don't have a firearm. They, or, or, they, or maybe they have one and they've never used it, never cleaned it, never shot it. Don't know how to take it apart. Don't know how to clear a jam. <laughs> don't know how to reload magazines or clean a barrel or disassemble a Glock. You're living in a country of massively unprepared people. And we have a name for those people. They're called the zombie mob <laughs> because the, that's what they will become very quickly. The zombie mob just kind of droning out from the cities in search of food and water and anything they can eat. Just moving along as zombies because they're hungry. The zombie mob, the zombie apocalypse. And now we are dealing with a situation with this global pandemic that could unleash the zombie mob. We hope it doesn't get that bad, but making the situation worse is the fact that people are not prepared. And you are living in a country surrounded by people who are not prepared. Think about that. It's a good time to ask yourself, where, where are you? Are you in a city, high population density city? Or are you out in the country? Are you surrounded by people who have some skills? And who are those people, by the way? Well, they would be veterans, people who've seen combat, people from the military, law enforcement, EMTs, firefighters, truck drivers. People who have had to go into very difficult situations and adapt and overcome and survive. And those are the groups I just named. If you want to be around people who can survive anything, you should choose those kind of people. You know, firefighters are, are great, great folks. EMTs, you know, combat medics, former military, you know, even car mechanics, you know, they've got more hands-on skills than, than almost everybody else. Farmers, to some degree. Farmers and ranchers are survivors. They have to work with their hands every day and solve problems every day just to survive versus a bunch of high-tech office workers, a bunch, of, a bunch of geeks and tyrants who work in cubicles and think they rule the world. They're going to find out real quick, uh, you don't rule anything. And you're down to your last box of Kraft macaroni and cheese, by the way. What you going to do now, sucker? <laughs> the answer is they're going to die. <laughs> That's the answer. They're going to freaking die. <laughs> or or they'll try to barter... Craft macaroni and cheese for, for water or something. Who knows? But they're not prepared. And if you're around a bunch of those people, you're in trouble. Might be time to strategically relocate. That's the truth. I'll have a lot more on this in the days and weeks ahead. We'll follow this pandemic and see if it gets bigger or smaller. You can read my website, naturalnews.com, of course, or hear my podcast at brighteon.com. Bright Eon. It's the word bright followed by E-O-N.
brighteon.com, the YouTube alternative for free speech. Check it out and thank you for your support. Stay safe. When it comes to prepping, you not only need good products that can help keep you alive, awake, aware, and nourished during difficult times, you also need products you can trust. At the Health Ranger store, we do extensive laboratory testing using an in-house lab that's ISO accredited. It's inspected, it's audited. It's a two-year process to even get that accreditation. We use multiple mass spec instruments, state-of-the-art science. I'm a published science author as well and a patent holder on several technologies, some of which we use variations of in our lab. The purpose of this lab is to help you make sure you get clean foods, superfoods, storable foods for emergency preparedness and survival use. We have a certified organic lab tested, what's called Ranger Bucket collection of storable foods with some survival gear in the buckets to help you even boil water and cook those foods and so on. It's a, a fantastic product. We can barely keep it in stock even during normal times. In a crisis, we'll be wiped out of this product because it actually takes us a lot of time to make those products. But if they're in stock, you can get them now at healthrangerstore.com slash prep with Mike. In fact, go to that URL, healthrangerstore.com slash prep with Mike, and you'll see some of our survival and preparedness supplies, including iodine, colloidal silver products and gel first aid products, storable foods, superfoods, medicinal herbs for first aid, and much more. We have a lot of products for you to help you be self-reliant, to be safe, to survive difficult circumstances, natural disasters, and all kinds of things. If you want to get prepared, do it with us at the Health Ranger store so that you know you're getting safe, clean, laboratory verified preparedness foods, supplements, and other related products. Again, the URL is healthrangerstore.com forward slash prep with Mike. All one word, no spaces. Prep with Mike. I'm Mike Adams. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. If you want to support our mission, visit us at healthrangerstore.com for the world's largest selection of lab verified superfood and nutritional products for healthy living. It's at healthrangerstore.com.